This video is a guide to the EMS radio and communication procedures utilized within Santa Clara County. The purpose of this video is to build familiarity with the devices used in day-to-day -day operations of the 911 system and to demonstrate proper radio and communication procedures. Here are the basic tools you'll need to be familiar with. The vehicle-mounted mobile radio and the handheld portable radio are the primary tools for routine contact with County Communications 911 dispatch. These radios operate in the UHF frequency band at 800 MHz and transmit and receive on frequencies assigned to the EMS system. The VHF mobile and portable radios are designed for interagency use and will allow for EMS personnel to speak directly to allied agencies such as fire department and law enforcement agencies. The alphanumeric pager and the radio pager provide redundant notification to EMS crews and save that information in text and audio formats respectively. The Mobile Dispatch Computer, or MDC, provides a data link to the dispatch terminal for call information and updates. The MDC is normally mounted in the ambulance cab near the center console, where it can easily be viewed by both crew members. 911 center dispatchers utilize a comprehensive radio system, computer-aided dispatch terminals, and specialized phone systems that all come together to create their single workstation. Here, each dispatcher has the ability to perform EMD, select and then communicate with system units, and then send vital information to their MDC and pagers. When someone calls 911, they are usually routed to the nearest public safety answering point for that jurisdiction. When calling from a cell phone, the call may first be routed to the California Highway Patrol's dispatch center to determine which public safety answering point is responsible for the area in which the event has occurred. Once the call is routed, a 911 call taker will confirm the location and basic nature of the call. Medical emergency 218, what's the address of the emergency? Then begin the triaging of the emergency, while at the same time okay, give pre-arrival instructions call? utilizing emergency medical dispatch standards. Okay, tell me exactly what happened. Are you with the patient now? How many people are hurt? Okay, are there any chemicals or other hazards involved? Once enough information is obtained, the call taker will continue to stay on the line with the reporting party while sending the call information to the primary dispatcher. The primary dispatcher will take the call information and assign the most appropriate resource to the event and dispatch that event to the unit assigned. All right, just stay in the line. We're going to get everyone started. Let me update the responders. Don't hang up, okay? In cases where the response includes multiple EMS units, the EMS field supervisor or the EMS duty chief may request that the communications for this event be conducted over one of the command channels. County EMS Supervisor 1 copies the NPMP Level 1. Please advise all inbound units to monitor Command 93. Copy EMS Field Supervisor 1, all units attached to the event switch to Command 93. When this occurs, all units should monitor both the primary dispatch channel and the command channel while responding. Medic 1 copy. County Medic 1 copies monitoring Command 93. Command 93, Medic 1 is monitoring. Once on scene, the unit should conduct their status keeping on the primary channel to the dispatch center, then transmit the same information on the command channel and be ready to receive their assignment. Proper radio procedure begins with the dispatching of the event. For Medic 1, Medic 18, and EMS Field Supervisor 1, Code 3 for an accident with injuries to the top of Carroll Drive at Canoas Garden Avenue. Once assigned to a response, the EMS crew must acknowledge the call and place themselves responding, both verbally and on their MDC. Map grids 854D David 5, run number 73. It's for a vehicle off the road with suspected multiple victims. Medic 1. County Medic 1 is responding from 85 and Cottle. Copy Medic 1 responding. EMS Field Supervisor 1. County Supervisor 1, copy. Copy, you're responding. As the crew arrives on scene, they should perform a verbal status update on the air and then on their MDC by selecting the on scene button. County Medic 1 is on scene. Stand by for report on conditions. For an ambulance without an MDC, sir, sir. or if the sir, MDC fails, sir. the crew will just verbalize their status over the radio and listen for the dispatcher to acknowledge. Stay with me. There are times Are there in which the circumstances injuries? do not match the details given by dispatch, 
and or the assigned resources may not be appropriate. Not okay, Always remember that bleeding. dispatch information is only as reliable okay, as the information great. received from the call to 911. Driver's not moving. Okay, is there any serious bleeding? Dispatchers will try to identify hazards and obtain an accurate picture of the emergency, but EMS crews are ultimately responsible for their own safety. If what the crew observes is not the same as what was dispatched, then they should perform an initial assessment and provide dispatch with an updated report on conditions. Sir, 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 can you hear me? Sir. Command 93, this is Medic 1. We appear to have a single vehicle involved in one patient. No apparent life hazards. Continue fire and cancel additional ambulances, please. In the example that you have just watched, the conditions reported by the first unit to arrive indicated that additional resources were not needed and that they should be released back into the EMS system. Remember, you should always provide justification when requesting more or fewer resources. This helps both the dispatch center as well as any command staff understand the reasons behind the change. Once an ambulance crew begins transport, the MDC should be used to notify dispatch of your destination, number of patients, and code of transport. If you do not have a functioning MDC, advise dispatch verbally with the same information. If you experience a status change during a transport, such as a Code 3 upgrade or the need to divert to a different facility, advise dispatch verbally as soon as it is safe to do so. County, this is Medic 1. We are upgrading Code 3 and continuing to Valley. Communication with the hospital is also a component of patient care. Using a cell phone, the crew member attending the patient should call the receiving emergency department during transport and notify them of impending arrival and of the patient's condition. This will allow the receiving facility to prepare for the arrival of the patient. Okay, on board we have a 30-year-old male uh, was involved in a low-speed motor vehicle collision into a set of bushes. He was a restrained driver. He has an obvious deformity over his left lower leg and an abrasion over his right eye with some dressings. We have him in full C-spine precautions. Uh, last set of vitals are as follows. Uh, blood pressure 124 over 74. He's sinus tac at 114. 18 respirations, he's 100% on room air. We have an 18 gauge in his left AC and we'll see in about five to seven minutes unless you have any questions. Okay, we'll see you then. This section addresses emergency traffic and the use of the emergency button function of the UHF or 800 megahertz radio. The recommended way to communicate that you or your partner are in danger and need assistance is with the phrase emergency traffic. Once a crew states emergency traffic on the air, all other radio traffic shall stop to allow the dispatch center to handle the emergency with the crew in danger. If a crew is not able to verbally communicate that they are in danger, then the emergency button function gives you and your partner a secondary way to alert dispatch of an imminent life hazard. Following correct procedure every time will make sure that legitimate emergency traffic advisories and button pushes are promptly and properly addressed. So what constitutes emergency traffic? Any imminent danger affecting you or your partner should be considered an emergency. Begin your transmission with your unit ID followed by emergency traffic and wait for the dispatcher to acknowledge. All other transmissions will halt and then you must provide your location, the nature of the emergency, and then request necessary resources such as law enforcement to respond. Always monitor the radio for further instructions, and if your location or the nature of the hazard changes, be sure to advise dispatch as soon as it is safe to do so. County MS Medic 1 with emergency traffic. Medic 1, what is your emergency? County MS Medic 1, uh, looks like my partner's just been assaulted at the corner store. McKee and King, looks like it's two individuals, dark jeans and hooded sweatshirts. One may possibly have a knife. Medic 1, copy that. PD has been dispatched and the supervisor has been notified. Please monitor this channel for additional instructions. County MS Medic 1 copies. So now, when should you push the emergency button? Anytime you or your partner face imminent danger and the circumstances prevent either of you from communicating verbally over the radio, the emergency button should be used. If there is a danger, but it is possible to verbalize that danger, follow the procedure for declaring emergency traffic verbally. If not, or if speaking on the radio would enhance the danger, make sure your radio is powered on and on the primary dispatch channel and press the emergency button firmly one time. 
The emergency button will only work on County EMS and on Command 92. Other channels will not transmit your emergency button push to the dispatcher. Also remember that only radio equipment that is currently logged on with County Communications will have their radio ID automatically associated with their unit number. If you are a non-911 ambulance, or if you are a 911 ambulance that is not currently logged into the 911 system, your emergency button push will register with only the radio ID and not your unit ID. This will make knowing your current location impossible for the dispatch center. If this is the case, it is imperative to then verbalize the words emergency traffic, followed by the required information in order to get help. Every time that an emergency button push occurs, it immediately halts all activity on all dispatch terminals within the communications center and alerts all dispatch personnel that there is an emergency. This is very disruptive to communication workflow and must be reserved only for times of necessity. Medic 2 County, do you have emergency traffic? Unnecessary emergency button pushes actually make it very difficult for dispatchers to coordinate resources to protect you and your partner. In the event that you press the emergency button by mistake and there is no imminent danger to you or your partner, you must state this exact response when prompted. No further assistance needed. Medic 2, County, do you have emergency traffic? County EMS Medic 2, no further assistance needed. County copy. If you respond with anything else or you do not respond at all, EMS system policy requires the dispatcher to assume that you are in imminent danger and are unable to communicate details. Whenever dispatch confirms that a crew is facing imminent danger, or if dispatch cannot confirm that a crew is safe, an immediate law enforcement response will be initiated and the details of an EMS crew in danger will be relayed to the responding officers. This will always be considered a Code 3 response. Medic 2, County, do you have emergency traffic? No response, Medic 2, initiating Code 3, law enforcement response. So now let's discuss alert tones. An alert tone is a sound played over the radio channel with the intent to grab the attention of all personnel monitoring the channel. Alert tones are played before critical system-wide or incident-specific messages and come in two varieties. The steady alert tone is used to announce a priority message such as an all points bulletin or a be on the lookout or when a hospital goes on to an internal disaster status. The tone is not to be used for broadcasting messages such as changes in hospital timers or suspension of meal breaks. If a steady alert tone is followed by a message that is specific to your unit or assignment, such as stage for a life hazard, acknowledge the message verbally over the primary dispatch channel. Medic 2, County EMS, be advised, life hazard alert for a fight in progress at your scene. Please stage. County EMS, Medic 2 copies, life hazard alert for a fight in progress, responding to stage. If the steady alert tone is followed by a general message that applies to the entire 911 system, such as hospital internal disaster, there is no need for individual units to acknowledge the message unless requested by dispatch. The warbler tone is used when the dispatcher needs to communicate critical information to the 911 system, such as a shelter in place order. The warbler tone always signals critical information, and every effort must be made by all EMS crews to listen to the transmission. All other radio traffic must stop until the critical broadcast is complete. As with the steady tone, if a warbler tone is followed by a message that is specific to your unit or assignment, you must acknowledge the message verbally over the primary dispatch channel. Attention all points. Units in the North County area shelter in place for an unknown chemical release in Sunnyvale. Stand by for roll call. Medic 2, do you copy? County MS Medic 2, copy shelter in place order for unknown chemical release. If the warbler alert tone is followed by a general message, there is no need for individual units to acknowledge the message unless requested by dispatch. Sometimes, due to surging call volume, the 911 system requests help from non-911 ambulance providers. This is done to ensure that every 911 medical call will have a responding ambulance, 
When a non-911 ambulance is selected to join the 911 system, the crew will be notified by their employer, and they must log on with county communications in order to receive 911 calls. Some private dispatch centers may provide unit logon information to county communications directly, but others may not. The best practice is for the crew to call county communications directly and provide the following information. The unit ID number, which will become the radio call sign. The level of service, either BLS or ALS. The vehicle mounted mobile ID number. The handheld portable radio ID number. The radio pager ID number and the unit's location, including nearest major cross streets. Once County Communications has entered the unit information into their CAD system, they will assign the unit to a post and set their status as available for 911 traffic. Additionally, now that this crew is logged on with County Communications, their emergency button will properly transmit identifying information if pressed. Let's review what we have discussed. The vehicle-mounted radio and the handheld portable radio are the primary tools for routine contact with County Communications 911 dispatch. The alphanumeric pager and the radio pager provide redundant notification to EMS crews and save that information in text and audio formats respectively. The mobile dispatch computer, or MDC, provides a data link to the dispatch terminal for call information and updates. When someone calls 911, they're usually routed to the nearest public safety answering point for that jurisdiction. Once the call is routed, a 911 call taker will confirm the location and basic nature of the call. Once enough information is obtained, the call taker will continue to stay on the line with the reporting party while sending the call information to the primary dispatcher. The primary dispatcher will take the call information and assign the most appropriate resource to the event and dispatch that event to the unit assigned. Once assigned to a response, the EMS crew must acknowledge the call and place themselves in route both verbally and on their MDC. As the crew arrives on scene, they should perform a verbal status update on the air and then on their MDC by selecting the On Scene button. There are times in which the circumstances do not match the details given by dispatch. If what the crew observes is not the same as what was dispatched, then they should provide dispatch with an updated report on conditions. Once an ambulance crew begins transport, the MDC should be used to notify dispatch of your destination, number of patients, and code of transport. If you experience a status change during transport, advise dispatch verbally as soon as it is safe to do so. Communication with the hospital is also a component of patient care. The crew member attending the patient should call the receiving emergency department during transport and notify them of impending arrival and of the patient's condition. The recommended way to communicate that you or your partner are in danger and need assistance is with the phrase, emergency traffic. Following correct procedure every time will make sure that legitimate emergency traffic advisories and button pushes are promptly and properly addressed. The emergency button will only work on County EMS and on Command 92. Other channels will not transmit your emergency button push to the dispatcher. Every time that an emergency button push occurs, it immediately halts activity on all dispatch terminals within the communication center and alerts all dispatch personnel that there is an emergency. In the event that you press the emergency button by mistake and there is no imminent danger to you or your partner, you must state this exact response when prompted. No further assistance needed. Whenever dispatch confirms that a crew is facing imminent danger, an immediate law enforcement response will be initiated. The steady alert tone is used to announce a priority message, such as an all points bulletin or a be on the lookout, or when a hospital goes into an internal disaster status. The warbler tone is used when the dispatcher needs to communicate critical information to the 911 system, such as a shelter in place order. When a non-911 ambulance is selected to join the 911 system, the crew will be notified by their employer and they must log on with county communications in order to receive 911 calls. Once county communications has entered the unit information into their CAD system, they will assign the unit to a post and set their status as available for 911 traffic. The information presented in this video and more may be found in the EMS Communication Systems Guide, EMS Reference Document Number 818. For this document or for more information, please visit sccemsagency.org.